Hi, Professor Maruk. It's Kelly Miller here, and in my summative blog reflection, I'm going to discuss all of my thoughts about this course and how it's helped me develop into not only a better manager, but also just a better coworker. I wrote my first blog about the expectations that I have from a manager. At the time, I was working for a manager who was extremely hands-off. We had a lot of trust in each other where she trusted me to get my work done, and I trusted her to provide feedback and let me know how I did on an assignment. This worked really well for us, but I've actually since switched roles and now I have a different manager who's much more hands-on. Uh, first, I was really worried that she was trying to micromanage me and take a structuralist approach to management like we learned about in class. She created a lot of new processes that I felt added a ton of work to my already full plate. After a while though, I realized she wasn't trying to micromanage me and she was actually just using contingency theory to create a more dynamic team. She spent a lot of time developing processes up front to help her understand the best way to manage each of us as individuals. And she pays attention to how to effectively communicate with us, which has ultimately helped me effectively communicate with others in our organization to get a job done quicker. Honestly, had I not taken this course, I wouldn't have even considered this management approach from her perspective, and I would have likely been a lot less receptive to her management style. Blog 2 was one of my favorites because I've taken a lot of personality tests before, but I've never actually taken the Big 5 test. As kind of a summation, my test results showed that I am not likely to seek out new experiences, I'm well organized and reliable, I'm outgoing and social, and I'm good natured, supportive, and relaxed. The organization and reliability trait is probably the one I display most in the office, and the head of my department actually frequently commends me for my organized behavior and conscious behaviors towards others. So it was nice to see these results both in the test and in action. Uh, when I saw my results showed me as sociable, supportive, and relaxed, I began to really think about how I come across to people at the office. I never considered how I could harness the three traits together to gain success in the company. Uh, but since taking the test, I've tried to make a more conscious effort to use my personal connections with people in the office to get jobs done more effectively without wrestling anyone's feathers. I actually shared the results with, I, with my boss, and she used them to figure out what motivates me and how she can communicate with me to get the best results possible. Motivation was the main topic of discussion in week three, and I blogged about my experiences with punishment during volleyball, as well as the positive motivation the head of my department gives me. My first full-time job has taught me more about what motivates me than any coach, teacher, or supervisor has ever done in the past. I've learned that I'm most motivated by achievement. When my boss gives me credit for a job well done, even if it's a relatively simple task, I'm a lot more responsive to whatever comes next. The head of my department is great at motivation because he focuses on the why. Like Simon Sinek says, people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And my boss is great at showing me the importance of what I do, and he shows others in the company how important my work is, which makes me feel really great and motivates me to work even harder. Now that I manage interns, I try to focus on explaining to them the why of their job. Instead of just assigning a task, I try to explain what, what the why of the task is, and not only does it need to be completed, but why it needs to be done well. And whenever I evaluate their work and it seems subpar, I look back at the assignment I sent them. And if I can say, no, that really didn't motivate me to do a good job because I didn't really understand why I was doing it, then I blame my own management skills rather than their performance. Motivation is different for everyone, but if I can gauge their responsiveness to my feedback and determine what makes them do a good job, then I'll be a much more effective manager. Nonverbal communication has always been something that totally interests me. I've researched a ton about the different nonverbal cues people give to explain their feelings. Like, I've read that when someone points their toes away from you during a conversation, that probably means they're not all that interested in what you have to say. Or if they, that you see someone who looks up and to the left, they might be lying to you, but if it's up and to the right, they're trying to remember something. I don't know how true they are all of the time, but it's definitely something that I pay attention to when I'm talking to someone. Spatial cues were something that I didn't really consider until after reading this chapter, but I've definitely paid more attention to them in my office. I have a couple people that I can tell see me as more of a friend because they stand closer when they're talking to me, and I have an intern who I can definitely tell is making an effort to be professional because she stands at a distance whenever she comes to me with questions. My team is clearly one of the closer teams relationship-wise because we always sit closer together than others in meetings and stuff. Um, I think I fully understood the importance of nonverbal communication before reading this chapter, but it encouraged me to look in the workplace and consider my nonverbal communication, like how my interns perceive me or how my boss might perceive me based on the nonverbal cues that I give. 
I know my blog entry for week five addressed intercultural communication in a completely different country, but I've also dealt a lot with intercultural communication in my workplace. I've learned that coming from different cultures really has affected how my interns communicate with me and each other and how I communicate with them individually. Just as an example, my intern Ray comes from a Japanese family. He's extremely analytically focused and is clearly driven by data. The only why that I have to give him is to say because this needs to be done to increase efficiency and he's completely motivated. He's also willing to work hard on what I consider the less fun tasks like cataloging an entire brand's products. I've learned that I can give him some very detailed, very monotonous tasks and he'll do them quickly and very well. I don't have to go to great lengths to encourage him, he just gets the job done and moves on to the next, next task. I think this stems a lot from his cultural background. He understands the importance of completing assignments quickly and effectively, and he's motivated by the thought of helping the team out no matter how uninteresting the task, task may be. I don't think I could have given the same work to one of my other interns who aren't from the same cultural background with the hopes that they would have done the job just as well as Ray does. In my sixth blog about group work, I talked about the huge success of my Amazon group. I'm always so proud to talk about this group because we're the youngest on the team and the youngest team in our department and the youngest department in the enterprise. The head of our department is only 30 and the other three of us on th in this particular group are 21, 22, and 24. We've dealt with a lot of doubt from the older groups, but I think our youth is something that we've actually used as a huge advantage to us. We're all really tech savvy and a lot more open with each other, like instead of emailing each other, we usually just text. And we're a lot more direct in the things that we need done now and the things that we think can wait a couple days. I've encouraged the same type of quick communication with my own interns, and I've tried to be as open with them as this group was with me. We're more formal and conversational with each other, and I think it's really helped improve our work dynamic and our productivity. I think it's extremely important to identify the overall attitude of a group because I realized that this style wouldn't work with everyone. And this chapter made me really consider the groups I've worked with in the past and why some groups are more successful than others. And I think the thing I've learned most is that open communication can make or break a group. And my most successful teams, without a doubt, have been the ones where we communicate quickly and candidly with each other. So as I work with more and more groups at my job, I realize that work conflicts differ a ton from personal conflicts. There are some conflicts in my company that have become effective and personal relationships have definitely taken a hit, but most of the conflicts in my workplace remain constructive. I actually think workplace conflict is really tricky because trying to keep things professional can sometimes create even more conflict. Just as an example, I know I like to discuss conflicts directly, but I've learned that there are plenty of people who will do anything to avoid addressing conflict. I think this has really hurt a lot of potentially successful tasks in our company because instead of addressing the elephant in the room, people are more passive aggressive towards each other. Or even worse, they ignore each other and hope that the issue goes away. As a manager, I want to be able to address all types of conflict in a way that doesn't offend anyone, but that also doesn't slow down productivity. I haven't had any real conflicts with my interns yet, but I think I'll take a direct approach where we talk through an issue, share both sides of an argument, and then kind of come up with a plan that satisfies everyone. I'm sure this will be a lot easier said than done, but this course has honestly taught me so much about how to communicate with interns in a way that motivates them and keeps them liking their jobs, but is still really, really productive and professional. I've always tried to consider behaviors and psychological aspects of communication in informal settings, like in my personal relationships or relationships with team members, but before taking this course, I never really considered how I could apply my understanding of certain behaviors in the workplace. Honestly, this entire course was extremely interesting to me, and I think applying what I've learned will help me grow into a better manager, and not only that, but just a more enjoyable person to work with. So thanks for taking the time to listen to my presentation, and I hope you enjoy the next class that you're with.